All right, so we are still in part one on page 84 in Grenade, and we're back to Ray speaking. And remember where we last left off, uh, they heard the grenade pin, basically we pulled a click, they knew that it was about to go off and that it was in Sergeant Meredith's belt. And so we opened back up with this look of panic as the sergeant's doing everything he can to get that grenade as far away from his men as possible, like to save as many lives as possible. And as it goes off, it looks like they've all been kind of peppered with shrapnel and debris as it explodes, but all of them feel fine. And they look over at Sergeant, who's not doing well. He's um, pretty cut up, torn up, uh, could die. Like if he's left there, he's going to bleed out and die. And they say, we need to get a medic, which would be like the ambulance service. It would be like a doctor coming out to the field. Big John, he's this big guy we already have kind of seen. He has like this heart of gold and he wants the best for everyone. And he says, nope, we don't have time to wait for them. I'll just take him right to the, the medic, right to the field hospital. And he just throws Sergeant Meredith over his shoulder. Sergeant Meredith, it, they tell you he's unconscious. He's passed out either from blood loss or pain. We don't really know either one. Um, so he doesn't even know what's happening. And he's being taken away. And all the while, Ray just keeps thinking about everything Sergeant Mary's done for him. Remember, we said last time, he's developed this relationship almost like a father-son or a big brother. Like, this guy's been looking out for him and making sure he's safe, that the other guys take care of him, that he knows what he needs to do, and he's kind of learning lessons about war from Sergeant Meredith. And now he's seeing that Sergeant Meredith might not make it. Well, when they get back to camp, they learn that... Uh, President Roosevelt has died that day, and this is true. Um, he died during the war of a stroke, um, and at first, some of the soldiers don't believe it. They think it's the Japanese army using propaganda, meaning like, if we tell them that their leader's dead, maybe it'll blow morale for them. They won't be as willing to fight, or there'll be confusion, and that gives us the upper hand. But the other guys are like, no, it's it's real. We're hearing it from American soldiers now. We We know it's the truth. And they're all kind of like mm, in a fog. Some of them really liked him because, and this is true, when he says uh, he's the only president to have done this, he served, well, three and a half terms, right? Um, he was elected for four terms as president. And now we have term limits. You can only be president twice, right? After your second time being president, after eight years, you're out. You cannot be president again. We have that now because of Roosevelt. Um, and he served so long. It's not that people didn't like him. They loved him, but he saw and others saw that um, it would become like a monarchy or a dictatorship if we allowed the same person to keep ruling over and over and over. So for him, he's now been president, you know, 12, 13 years at this point when he got reelected again. So Ray's telling us, this guy's been the president since I was a little kid. He's the only president I know. How? Uh, what's this world going to be like? What's this country going to be like? And as they're all kind of pondering this, somebody yells grenade, and they see a grenade fall at their feet. And it goes off, um, loud bang, like pop, almost like a firework, but it doesn't explode with shrapnel everywhere. And as they're confused, they realize this private Wilbert Gim Gimmer, or Zimmer, I'm sorry, he, he yells out, he's like, ah, I thought I shook the powder out. So he, he had emptied a grenade, and his plan was to throw the grenade at them, and it would do nothing but scare them off. But because there was still a little bit of powder left in it, it does that, like, small pop, small explosion, like a firework. So nothing deadly, but enough to scare the bejeebies out of all of them. And it does. It, not, I mean, they're upset that it's a... It's a bad prank, no matter what. If you're in war, it's not funny if somebody's like, you're about to die. Ha ha ha, what a funny joke. Like, it's a it's a poor planned prank anyway, and not one that should be done. But what he doesn't realize is that they're all there waiting to hear about their sergeant who was almost killed by a grenade. So it's a little too close to home, a little too real. And when they realize it's a joke, um, Big John uh, just goes cray-cray. And he starts attacking this guy, beating the tar out of him, um, just because he's so mad. And it's probably a lot of bottled up emotion, too, if you think about it. They're all anxious, nervous, upset over everything that's happened to them in the last day or two. And they have all this um, 
pent up rage and anxiety and nerves. So when this happens, he just explodes himself, basically. He kind of becomes the grenade. Um, and the next thing they find out, he goes to take a nap and he finds out that Sergeant's going to make it. They fixed him. Um, it, it, prognosis looks good. In fact, he's going to be taken to an actual hospital in Hawaii. They get to take care of him. And when they talk about the golden ticket, it's not like, hey, you get to go to Hawaii, vacay. It's once you're healed from there, you get to be discharged, honorably discharged from the military. So he gets to be out of war. He gets to be safe. And he's like, that's what we all want. Like, this is a big deal. And Ray asked the obvious question for those that are still there. Okay, but who's in charge of us now? Who's the new leader? And he finds out it's Big John. Uh, so somebody he knows and trusts, his foxhole buddy, is going to be in charge. And Big John lets him know, by the way, we're going to the front tomorrow. Like, the real fighting starts tomorrow. And it's going to be pretty tough. 